welcome everyone to tonight's council meeting. Uh, I know the weather wasn't the greatest, but appreciate everybody making it here tonight. And I'd like to thank Wayne Thompson. He came early and decorated the chambers for all of council. <laughs> he wanted to get us all the Valentine's mood, so that's really nice. So what we'd like to do is start off our meeting with the playing of Old Canada. So we'll direct your attention to the video screens. Order of the uh, item for our agenda is the adoption of the minutes from our January 29th meeting. Moved by Councilor Peter Anzin, seconded by Councilor Strange. Call the vote. All those in favor? Okay, and the minutes are approved. Now, item four disclosures of a pecuniary interest. Do you have any disclosures of anyone from Council? Uh, Councilor Licoco. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Chip number 423041. For $2,500 payable to me. Check number 423503, January 16th, 2019, 9839, payable to me. And check 423757, January 23rd, 17605, to project share. I sit on the board as a resident. Okay, thank you for that. You. Mr. Clerk, you've got that. Okay, oh, uh, Councillor Campbell. Thank you, Your Worship. Check number 423424, made payable to myself. Okay, thank you for that. Councillor Peter Angelo. Thanks, Your Worship. There's a reimbursement check for myself as well. It's 423752. Okay, thank you for that. Do we have any other ones? And uh, I'm just having a peek here too. And I've got one as well. Sorry, these are so tiny. Okay, here we go. And uh, for me, Mr. Clerk, it is check number 423672, check made payable to myself as well. So we have no other uh, checks or disclosures, then we'll move along to the uh, everyone's favorite part of the meeting, the mayor's reports and announcements. It's very brief tonight. First thing. No. Yeah, oh yeah, it's right at the beginning. Get, so how did it get moved up? So I don't know. It just worked out good. End. It used to be at the end, yeah. and then people were complaining they missed it. And so oh. they asked, they requested, we had a lot of letters written in by my mother, my aunt, uh, <laughs> my sister, everybody wrote letters. So anyway, uh, this will be brief tonight. Uh, obituaries. Um, our condolences go out to Nicoletta De Cosmo, mother of Joe De Cosmo of our transportation department. And as well, uh, sad the loss of Tony Panessa, one of our bus drivers for Niagara Falls Transit. I'd like to thank Councillor Strange for representing the city, giving greetings at the Niagara Korean Association's New Year's Eve party. And the last thing, uh, I'd like to, second last thing is to wish everyone a happy Valentine's Day. And again, to thank Councillor Thompson for what you did in Chambers today, we appreciate that. And uh, lastly is our next council meeting will be Tuesday, February the 26th, where we'll be dealing with more budgetary items, including our capital budget. So that's it for the announcements, Councillor. Wow, that was quick. Yeah, that was brief. It was.
case. It was one. <laughs> it was the best I know. It was brief. Uh, moving on to uh, appointments and presentation 6.1, Citizens for Responsible Development. We've got Diane Monroe who's requested to speak to council on their behalf. Thank you very much for allowing me to speak to council tonight. <clears throat> I am here as a representative of a new advocacy and communication group, Citizens for Responsible Development Niagara Falls. Approximately 20 people in our community got together to establish a volunteer community organization for the purpose of identifying and promoting responsible development within the city of Niagara Falls and surrounding areas which are included in the city of Niagara Falls, identifying areas of concern and actively promoting development that will enhance our community, protecting the natural environment including protected water, wetlands and endangered or threatened species. Enduring, uh, ensuring development is supported by social, cultural, and heritage needs of the community and that these venues are protected. We're ensuring, we would like to ensure development is supported by the accompanying infrastructure updates, protect building proactive relationship with developers with a view to achieving balance, and developing the Ma Niagara Falls as an inclusive and desirable community that may be enjoyed by all citizens while promoting good governance and transparency in all aspects of the development process. We are in the process of incorporating and this should be accomplished in the next couple of weeks. We are not an adversarial group, but rather see ourselves as assistance to communication so that dialogue can be both ways, from and to council and from and to the residents. So often in the last few years, residents are not informed or feel that they have not been informed when a development is, is considered that will impact on their way of life or denigrate the community feeling that they enjoy. This citizens advocacy group, Citizens for Responsible Development, hopes that we will be seen as a vehicle to establish healthy dialogue and to promote responsible development. Many people see this council as being one-sided, pandering only to developers or the tourism industry. While intensification is provincially mandated for our community, many see that the intensification is being done without regard to the community. In a similar matter, residents see that tourism and the tourist industry appear to be the priority. We are lucky here in Niagara Falls that we have a rich tourism industry. It is the gravy but council at times appears to forget that the residents are the bread and butter. We see our role primarily as one of communication facilitators, informing the public and raising concerns when they are there, and also praising when it is done right, such as at the last council meeting when a building was repurposed for seniors housing and a brownfield development was approved that was of appropriate size for the surrounding community. We will praise you when you do it right. Citizens for Responsible Development Niagara Falls will address areas of public concern. Living or doing business within a city implies a sense of responsibility to maintain the community and to work with government authorities to ensure preservation of the community for the benefit, enjoyment of this and future generations. This committee seeks to preserve the beauty of the area and to protect environmentally sensitive areas while promoting and encouraging responsible development that will not endanger or forever change the natural beauty of the area. It is the goal of this organization to enhance the community so that all may feel a part of this great community. We acknowledge that paramount among the physical characteristics of the Niagara Falls area, that there are many features that make it unique. The falls, as one of the wonders of the world, is a natural draw for tourists all over the world. The area surrounding the falls is rich in history and offers a unique opportunity to explore the histor historically significant places that contributed to the creation of Canada. We are blessed with provincially significant wetlands. We need to protect and maintain these species rich environments for this and future generations. Connecting two of the Great Lakes, the Niagara River provides a major source of water for most of the province of Ontario and must be protected from pollution or degradation. Waterfront paths and nature trails provide access to the beauty for all ages and for all income levels. 
Niagara Falls, while relying heavily on tourism as a source of capital, must recognize the citizens who live here and who contribute to the uniqueness of this community are important. Niagara Falls is a conglomeration of small communities such as, but not limited to, River Road, Chippewa, and Stamford, all have, who have unique cultural characteristics which must be maintained and respected. We accept this as our responsibility as citizens of this community to nurture and protect these unique characteristics and to assume the role as stewards of this area. We are therefore requesting the council accept this committee as partners in stewardship and communication and will listen to the citizens as this council moves forward with developments. We do have some concerns, but we are here this evening to, our extend, our, to extend our hands to assist this council in the development process. As you are well aware, research into healthy communities and transparency in government is greatly enhanced when citizens' committees work in close proximity with council. We are here as concerned citizens to request that this council recognize Citizens for Responsible Development in Niagara Falls as a citizens' committee with whom they will work in close proximity to ensure Niagara Falls is a healthy and welcoming community for all. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Uh, councilors, uh, if we have questions, I've got Councilor Cario. Um, I don't know how to say this nicely, but you are criticizing us and accusing us of not having the best interests of most of the citizens at hand. And you are asking us to, I don't know what you're asking, but you're starting out by saying, we don't like what you're doing you only look after certain segments and groups in our community. That was part of your speech. That was part of my speech. I said it appears that way. And many citizens feel that way. I think by having a citizens uh, communication and advocacy group. Councillor carrio has got the floor. We're fine. Yeah, I'm, I'm sorry, sorry. I'm so, should I'm I not sorry. have spoken then? No, 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 no you're, you're fine. You're right to answer. Good. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Thank you. Um, so, what I'm saying is that there are many citizens who feel that you have not looked after the, I mean, thundering waters, the, the controversy around that is a prime example. I think that having a citizens advocacy group where we can reach out to citizens, where we can explain things, where we can get feedback and bring it back to council will sort of uh, uh, level the playing field a little bit and, and make things go smoother. We want good development in this community. We want healthy development. We want development that protects the natural beauty of Niagara Falls. Well, we just, just to answer that, if it's my turn. Yeah, yeah you still have the floor. Uh, thousands of taxpayers in Niagara Falls voted for this group of councillors to represent them. That's true. So and I'm, thousands did not vote. Well, that's their prerogative. But exactly. the thousands that did vote to put this group in charge of their community have put their trust in us and they wouldn't have voted for us if they didn't trust us. It's unfortunate that you and your group don't feel the same way, but the thousands of people that elected this council and put us here have entrusted us to do what you're asking to do. Okay, and we're asking to help you do it. Okay. Do we have other co councillors who'd like to, Councillor Campbell? Uh, thank you, Your Worship. Uh, is this a closed group? Uh, no, we are opening this group. As soon as we uh, achieve our incorporation, we will be opening this group to all citizens in Niagara Falls. We are hoping to gather email addresses and to have input from anybody who has a concern so that we can, as a group, help people move forward with their concerns so their, their concerns are heard and that we can, in some t cases, help ameliorate some of those concerns that they may have. Um, Your Worship, this probably isn't any different than um, the committees that we appoint citizens to. Here's a group of citizens coming to us and saying, we'd like to take care or provide information from this perspective. Uh, Councillor Lococo indicated she was looking for public input with respect to the budget, which we passed. We accepted that as a, uh, a natural thing to be happening. I can't see anything wrong with this. I would make the motion that uh, we, we accept the, uh, their proposal to a uh, council and uh, let's see how it works out. 
Uh, okay, so you're making a motion that we accept. So the proposal, what exactly is the part you're the, This council recognized the Citizens for Responsible Development, Niagara Falls, as a citizens committee with whom they will work in close proximity to ensure Niagara Falls is a healthy and welcoming community for all. Okay, so that's your motion. And Councilor Lococo, are you seconding that? I would second it, but I have some questions about the logistics about how that would happen. Yep. Yep, well, would you like, you can go ahead, you can have the floor. Mr. Mayor, through the speaker, how, how do you see the communication working? What departments would be involved? How do you see that communication going? Well, I think one, one of the things that we have found is that sometimes it's difficult to navigate the website. And when there are developments that are being, or public meetings that are coming up, it says things like, you know, uh, public meeting of uh, plan number, you know, ABC dash, QWZ34, nobody knows what that is. But if we can work closely, and I, and I have a good relationship with Alex Herlovich, so, and many of the rest of us have a good relationship with the rest of the planning department, we will go to him and say, where is this development? And hopefully he will come to us and say, these are the developments that are being planned so that we can notify the citizens around. I mean, the council's only, or the, the planning department's only obligated to notify people within 250 feet or something like that. We hope that we'll be able to notify people that would be, be concerned and let them know where these developments are. Many of the developments that are proposed are, are great, you know, and we're very gung-ho about them. And wouldn't that be great that this council could have somebody, you know, write a little article on Facebook and Instagram and in the newspapers saying, way to go, council, you've done a great job of, of doing this. And that's what we're really hoping is that we'll be, you know, communication facilitators. Just on that point, excuse me, uh, Councillor, uh, Mr. Hurlovich wanted to uh, comment. I would just say that with respect to navigating the city's website to find public notices, any resident would type in www.niagarafalls.ca on the home page. There is a link that says public notices. All our public notices are placed there by our communications department. So you don't have to search anywhere. It's right there as soon as you open the screen. Okay, thank you for that. Thank you. Councillor, yeah, you have the floor. Through the mayor to the speaker, would it be you contacting the city that the onus is on you, or do you want us to contact you when development is being? Um, I, I think the onus is on us as a citizens committee. I think that is our responsibility, and we're taking that responsibility. Um, we also hope that we will develop a, a good enough response, uh, relationship that, you know, if there's something coming up that we need to be aware of that's gone under our radar screen, that Alex would say the next time we're having coffee, hey, Di, you know, this is coming up, you better look at this. Yeah. Mr. Mayor, I would second the motion. Okay. Uh, do we have other councillors? Councillor Carrio. Well, well, you were, I certainly am not going to, I'm not going to support the motion. I don't believe that this is a non-adversarial group at all. When you come to the council and the first thing you do is insult the council, I don't think that's a, a good way to say you're an ad, not an adversarial group. I think you are an adversarial group. And I don't think that we need you looking over our shoulders. Glad to have your help. We're all accessible. We all have phones published. We all have emails. We're all accessible. And the taxpayers of the citizens of Niagara Falls have put us in the position that you'd like to be in. So I'm not gonna support the motion. Okay, uh, Councillor uh, Thompson. Well, um, if you look at every project that comes to the city, there's always the people right around that that are affected, that form their own committee and contact us and come in and make their submission. Um, during your uh, comments, I was amazed uh, with your negative comments with respect to tourism. I have been around a long time and I was mayor when all of our industry started to pull out of the area because the provincial government changed the cost of power at, because we had the cheapest power in Ontario because we're beside the falls. And we used to uh, go out at election time uh, the cyanamide, the welling chemical, the lionite, uh, all of these places. There'd be two, three thousand people running out 
at the end of the shift. And we had industrial development and we did not have tourism. We used to have the magic 100 days where they came in April, uh, May 24th and left in Labor Day. And I tell you, we've worked so hard in the past uh, 25 years to change that around. Um, I was involved with the Chamber of Commerce just recently regarding the best thing that's happened to this municipality for economic development in the last 30 years. And they said the casinos and asked me to uh, speak on that. And I worked hard on that, not because of tourism, is because we're pr providing jobs. You know how many jobs there are? It, probably 25,000 jobs from around the entire region that come here every day to support what we got because of the falls, the Parks Commission, and where would we be otherwise? Do you know what the uh, assessment for in industry is in this city? No, I don't. Why would you research that? It's 2.9%, which is, means we are not in the industrial business. And all we've attempted to do is take advantage of what we have out here to bring people to create jobs to make this a, a wonderful community, which it is, and we've been very successful at it. And to come up here and make negative comments, what would we do tomorrow without tourism? I'm sorry, yes. sir. I think you have I, misunderstood I what I have said. To listen to you. I'm sorry. Thank okay. You. Uh, My apologies. I don't care. Uh, we are so lucky to have what we have here, and uh, to, to su suggest that a committee is going to come. I listen to people every day, sometimes 20 phone calls in a day about their issues and their problems and their concerns. And I'm sure everybody else around the table does the same thing. So I don't know what we're attempting to do here. Every project out there uh, has a group who is trying to uh, get their word upon to this council, which I understand, and that's our responsibility. So I, I think that uh, the thinking here with respect to tourism is really unbelievable. I can't believe it. Thank you. Did you want to respond? Yeah, I just wanted to read the sentence that I said about tourism. It says, we are lucky here in Niagara Falls that we have a rich tourism industry. That is what I said. That's not um, what I she think started one of off by saying. It was negative. Okay, thank you. I've got Councillor Dabrowski. Uh, through you, the Mayor, Ms. Monroe, thank you for your, for your presentation. I think we have to keep in mind, we're, we're lucky to live um, in a community that, that has an at large system. We have eight councillors and a mayor around the table that, that our residents and our citizens can, as, as Councillor Thompson, Thompson mentioned, that can pick up the phone Facebook message, email. I've only been on council for a number of months, but I've already had a, an opportunity to meet with a number of residents. So have you had a chance to meet with many members of council in the, over the past two or three years? Or? Absolutely, I've met with several members of okay. council over uh, the last few years. Okay, I, I think that the ongoing dialogue... I, I, may may on. I just may some, say course. something? I don't think that it is an issue that we cannot approach council. This is an approachable council. And I think everybody would agree with that. I mean, we have phone numbers and cell phone numbers that we can reach you at any time. I think what we're, we're looking at is that as de development moves forward, there are some concerns. And um, if you are aware of the new LPAT that's coming in, in order to be able to question or have standing at the LPAT, you have to be an incorporated body. 
how many citizens are going to incorporate themselves so that they can present their point of view. This is a vehicle that we may be able to help the regular citizens to be able to put their point of view through when LPAT comes. Now we're not going to rubber stamp every single thing. We're not silly people. We're quite bright, articulate, well-educated people who really have this community at their best interest. And all we're asking to do is let us help you communicate to the people the good, the bad, and the ugly, but mainly the good. We are not saying that there's a lot of things negative here. We are saying we want to work forward in a progressive, appropriate manner. I think I'll echo what Councillor Kerry had mentioned. There was a vote um, in October. Obviously, the people who voted this council in uh, supports this council, they trust this council and the decisions that they'll make. I think with Facebook and Instagram, we, we live in a, a technological age where we're available 24 7. You can pick up the phone, you can contact us. I think we, we have your best interests at heart, um, and to that end, I, I don't support the motion. And do you think that the, a lot of people would agree with that with Thundering Waters? I don't think that that's the discussion we're having mm -hmm. right now. I think to the motion, I'm speaking to that. And I, I think Fine. we're speaking more about communications and that, that's what we're talking about today. Okay. Thank you. Okay. I've got Councillor Cario. Uh, just a comment, not, not, not to, uh, you're welcome to come and comment on anything that comes before this council. Thank you. You are, uh, you know, we, we welcome your comments. We welcome your input. It's just to have another, uh, uh, body that, that the uh, developers or the council or whatever has to go to, I don't think is something that we're looking to, to have. You're welcome now. You don't, we don't need to pass anything. Uh, the city notifies, uh, puts notifications in the paper, notifies everyone of any issues that are coming before council, and you and your group are, are well informed on things that come before council. And we welcome them. I just don't like, I didn't like the approach. I didn't like the tone of your first comments. It was <coughs> accusing us of not really doing our job and only worrying about a certain segment. That's not my, that's not my role. I'm, I'm looking after as many of the people in Niagara as I can. We welcome you to come. We don't need to do anything more. You can come to any of our planning meetings, any of the other meetings. Uh, you're welcome uh, to make your comments known as a group or individually. You already have that. And, and, when, and when large segments of the citizens feel that the only, um, choice they have is to go through LPAT and they need to be incorporated. Are you going to help them with the financial costs of incorporation? Sorry, that was sarcastic. I shouldn't have said that. Well, it's adversarial, but that's okay. It was sarcastic. Yeah. Is there any other members of council had questions and wanted to make comment? Councillor Campbell. Uh, thank you, Your Worship. I, I, I'm sorry that this got off uh, on the negative foot with tourism. I think we all agree around the table that we represent all the citizens of Niagara Falls. Um, as Councillor Curio said, we welcome you to come to Council any time that you, you have an issue. Um, I'm taking this as a, an opportunity just to officially recognize them as a group. And uh, they have no power. They have no authority over any staff no. members. It, it, they're trying to uh, help make our community a better place to work, live, and play. So if there's no further, I did have one question um, to Ms. Monroe, because I saw in the letter you sent that you said to a group of approximately 15, and in your presentation you referenced 20, and that you were still open to membership. So do you actually have a number on, on you're going to have a cutoff point? Or no, 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 we're, no. We're, this is just the, the 15 to 20 members is the steering committee. We see ourselves as a steering committee, and we are going to be opening it up to you know, everybody in Niagara Falls that would like to attend meetings, we'll have regular meetings, we'll have regular uh, postings of all of uh, um, our concerns and our, our praises and um, we'll move forward from there. Okay, thank you for that. All right, well, we've got a motion moved by Councillor Campbell and seconded by uh, Councillor Lococo uh, that this group be recognized for the purposes of communicating different uh, events and things happening within the city, the good, the bad, and the ugly. So we'll call the vote. All those in favor? Okay, and opposed? Okay, so that motion fails. I have a motion. Yes, Councillor Cario. Let me thank them. thank them very much for their presentation. Welcome to come anytime and receive a follow-up presentation. Okay, a motion by Councillor Cario, seconded by Councillor Campbell, that it would be thanked, welcomed, and uh, invited to come to any time that they want to come. We'll call that vote. All those in favor? Okay, and that's unanimous. Thank, Thank you. you very much for being here.
Okay, we now move along to our budget presentation. And I would invite our budget chair, Councilor Peter Angelo, to take my chair. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Okay, tonight will be our first uh, presentation of the 2019 operating budget. Uh, Tiffany Clark has uh, recently taken over as the acting director of finance, and I know she's going to walk council through the presentation. So, Tiffany, I'll pass it over to you. Because no one wanted to stay. <laughs> okay. Maybe. Okay, I will try to keep everyone awake longer than Todd does. Um, <laughs> I had to. <laughs> so here's what we're looking at for our draft operating budget. Uh, we've proposed revenues at 141 million, expenses 142.7, <coughs> which is working out to a difference of 1.6. Um, the levy increase required after growth to balance that would be about 2.47%. And then for Council's reference, I've included that uh, per the Bank of Canada, the total CPI at the end of 2018 was 2%. So how does that break down? So the revenues, 141,000, um, this is showing you by object code. So taxation, you can see we've had um, very uh, successful growth, 1.82%, uh, that $1.2 million. Um, the other municipalities, $2 million. This represents an increase in funding uh, to be received from the region for the increase in intermunicipal transit service hours, which is gonna be discussed later. The casino revenue, um, I've increased the budget to better reflect the actuals. Our last, uh, our year to date for 2018, our calendar year, not the uh, OLG's year, came in at 24.8 million. So I've just increased the budget to 23.5 to better reflect actuals, but there's a corresponding increase of the same amount in the transfer uh, to reserves, because as council knows, we put that away and then allocate it through the capital budget. So there's no levy impact, just making budget more closer to actuals. Uh, grants, again, same thing. This is an increase in the Ontario Community Infrastructure Fund. Uh, it's gone up from, I believe it was 2.1, sorry, 2.2 million last year to 3.3 million. Um, on our operating budget actually still had the 2017 figure. I'm not sure we must have received the notice late. So again, increase on the revenue side, but same increase on the expense side, no levy effect for the taxpayer. Um, I think that was all I was gonna highlight here on the expenditures. So we've got our salaries going up about 4%. Um, as you learned in camera, this represents uh, the 11 new positions we're recommending. There is a couple slides later in the presentation that outlines what those are. Uh, oh, debt servicing. Um, you can see on the debt servicing, um, yeah, there's this laser over here. Um, about $50,000 is coming off the budget for debt servicing costs, so just a little bit this year. Um, and then in the transfer columns, you can see those uh, increases I was talking about over here that are. Chair. Yeah. The transfer. Can I ask a question? Sure, absolutely. Yeah. Um, transfer the capital. Well, we're transferring 1.3 million dollars for more this year to capital on that transfer to capital line. Yep. So, yes. Yes. So uh, it's not necessarily more this year. So um, well, because of the increase in the Ontario Community Infrastructure Fund, that increase has been reflected there as well. Um, we did increase the transfer to capital from $4 million to $4.5 million, and this is to help offset, um, we'll get to in a later slide, uh, we're moving this year a lot of our capital staff, project managers, salaries over to be funded from the capital budget to be allocated to the projects that they're working on. And the transfer to reserves and reserve funds, 3.6? Yep, so part of that, through you Mr. Chair, to the 
Council. So part of that is the um, 2.5 million that I increased the casino money for. Yeah. And then, just a second. Uh, and there's a, oh, you see it's in a later slide. I've asked for an assessment appeal, um, special purpose reserve of 200,000, and we've increased our fleet replacement transfer. We're hoping that we can increase it from 150,000 up to 863,000. Thank you. Welcome. So expenses are going up 5.93%, revenue was 4.7. Uh, the next two slides just break this out by departmental category. I'm not going to go through these in too much detail because my next slides highlight some of the highlights. So that's the revenue, um, and then the expenses are there on your iPads as well. So uh, fee for service groups. So we've got our, our fee for service groups listed here. Um, the Boys and Girls Club is requesting a small increase of five thousand dollars, or two point five percent. The last increase they had was two point eight percent in two thousand and fifteen. So staff is comfortable recommending a small increase, uh, but that is council's discretion. And same thing with the art gallery. They've requested a small increase of $1,000 or 3.7%, and their allotments remained at that $27,000 since 2012. So again, staff is comfortable with a small increase. For grants, um, as you guys are aware, we've got the municipal accommodation tax that's effective January 1st this year. And as a result, we have removed Niagara Falls Tourism and Winter Festival of Lights from our operating budget. This frees up $702,000. And those groups were encouraged to um, seek funding through the uh, Niagara Falls Hotel Association, who's responsible for the um, municipal accommodation tax monies. The other grants, we've got uh, Project Share, Women's Place, YWCA, and One Foundation is the hospital grant. Uh, staff's recommending we maintain the levels, the 2018 levels, which also haven't changed for a number of years. In terms of the Lions grant, uh, Council's maintained a position of not entertaining new grants, and in the last few years they've actually removed quite a few. Um, Council's being asked later in the agenda in the fee waiver report to continue this position of not entertaining new grants. Staff is actually recommending that we remove the Lions Club grant of $2,000 as well, and that's in line with past practice of removing grants from our budget. On that, uh, yep, go ahead. Uh, the Warren Foundation, <coughs> um, is that uh, part of a, a commitment, a so many year commitment, or is that just being put in the budget every year now? Uh, through you, Mr. Chair, I, I'm not aware if that's a commitment or not. I can't remember whether we committed them for so many years or. And we paid <coughs> it for quite some time. I thought when they asked for the 50, I thought it was. I, I thought I didn't know they were going to come back. Mr. Chair, if I may, um, we've included that amount every year for every several year. years now. Yeah. Uh, when one foundation appeared here, I'm not sure how many years ago, yeah. this is a contribution towards equipment purchase right. uh, for the hospital, which is part of the community uh, contribution. Right. Um, this is completely separate from any new, ho uh, new hospital lands right. or build, uh, but this is simply going to GNGH, and I, I believe we made it specific to GNGH, uh, that this money would be used for new equipment purchases, and we've just kept that in the budget. Over the years. Years. No, but I think, yeah, okay. the question was, are we on a multi-year commitment, yes. or is this just something that we've been doing for I, I believe we've just kept it going year to year. Yeah, I think so. Okay, thank you. Okay, so that's grants. Um, for our board, so this one, I, I put a lot of text there. I know it's a bit wordy, um, but I wanted to explain the airport. So. Although it looks like the airport's asking for an increase of 131,000 to 162,000, last year their ask came in late in March after our operating budget was already approved. So council approved their operating increase through the May report with the OLG funding. So in 2018, we paid the airport 156,000 for operating their operating grant. However, only 131,000 was included in the operating budget. The remaining 25,000 was paid through OLG monies. This year, we've received the request in time to include the ask in the budget. Councilor Thompson, um, could somebody bring us up to, to date where the region plays? Yep, good question. I think there's airport. consensus on that. Yes, thank you, uh, through you, Mr. Chair. We have uh, actually a meeting uh, later this week uh, with the uh, CAOs and the acting CAO at the region. 
the discussions were put on hold uh, as we went through the election period last year and with some changes in the CAO at the region. Uh, we're getting that back on stream. Uh, we have an airport liaison committee. Uh, the airport liaison committee is made up of the three mayors and the three CAOs from the partner municipalities. Uh, we met about a month ago and came up with a strategy and that's led to our meeting with the CAOs it's this week. We'll be back uh, reporting uh, to you probably in the next month. Uh, but our goal still is to look at other partners, including the region, and looking to push this asset up to the regional level. Uh, I, I thought that was a uh, discussion that has already been going on, uh, didn't go anywhere. Uh, uh, excuse me, Mr. Chair. It has been ongoing. Uh, there's been several pieces that we've completed. Uh, if Council may recall, uh, we, did, uh, we had to do an environmental assessment. Uh, in case we are looking at transferring the property, that was completed. Uh, we did an asset valuation of the airport itself, that was completed. And the third piece is that we went out and did a uh, proposal call to see if there was any private sector interest that wanted to partner with us. We wanted to complete all three of those processes before we took the uh, discussion any further to the regional level. We're at that stage now and uh, you know we're hopeful that in the next few months we'll be able to have uh, a lot more news to report to council. Uh, so gonna we're going to be reporting back. I would hope we'd be able to be back with some information to you, hopefully within the next month or two. Thank you. Okay, and then the library. Um, I had some phone calls from some of the councillors just asking for more specifics on what the library increase represented, so I thought I would just include a couple of the highlights below. So they're asking for a 5.2% increase. And this can be largely explained with labor increasing 171,000, which is cost of living increases and a request for three part-time staff. Um, the library's expanded their hours back to seven days service, adding Sundays back to the community center and Victoria. They've also got Friday nights now at the community center and additional hours to Chippewa. And then there's an increase in digital resources of 22,000, uh, which represents uh, more users moving to electronic resources like eBooks. And then security, um, they're having a, some security issues at their Victoria Library and they now have full-time security, so that's gone up by $32,000, almost 33. Council Carrier? Question pertaining to library. Yep. How in-depth do we, do you or do some of your people get into it reviewing the request for the library? Or have we gone over their, their budget um, pretty seriously and you're comfortable with the increase? Or do we just take what they have told you? Through you, Mr. Chair. Um, we look through, we meet with Alicia and Caitlin, her assistant, and go through um, a detailed Excel spreadsheet of their budget. They explain all the increases. I worked with Alicia to, to come up with what was driving her increases. Um, I believe her board dictates, they make the decisions on the budget, and that's what's presented to <coughs> us. So have I gone in and analyzed it heavily? No. Okay. Okay. Thanks. Uh, so new positions, I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this, we talked about this quite a bit in camera, but we, uh, staff did ask for 21 new positions and uh, we've narrowed that down to 11 recommended, uh, four of which don't have an impact on the operating budget achieved through attrition, etc. Uh, so sorry, those are just highlighted with the checkmark ones are the ones we're recommending. And then, so these are some highlights about um, some of the different departmental areas. So administrative services, which would be CAO, human resources, legal, finance, the internal departments, uh, just some highlights. The Ontario Municipal Partnership Fund amounts, they're still not released from the province. Uh, for the last three years, they've been reducing by 15%. So currently our budget includes an estimated reduction of 115,000 or 15%. Um, hopefully it's not more. Casino revenue, I talked about this one. So I've increased it by 2.5 million to better reflect the actuals. And again, corresponding transfer to special purpose reserve fund is increased by the same, so no impact on the levy. Doctor recruitment, there's a report coming up later um, for this, and they're recommending an increase from $80,000 to 300,000. The corresponding transfer from reserve fund is increased by the same amount, so there's no impact on the levy. Doctor recruitment's always been funded by our reserves. Uh, I wanted to highlight there is a new initiative included in administrative services and that's $60,000 for a customer service plan 
And then the senior property tax rebate, we've been experiencing increased applications, so we've increased the budget to match demand. So now we can accept uh, 680 applications as opposed to 400 in the prior budget. Uh, some more, oh, we've got a transfer to special purpose reserves added for $200,000. We're requesting that this be added this year to set up a reserve for assessment appeal allowances. So we do have write-offs budgeted into our taxation budget, but this would be, the idea would be if our actual write-offs exceeded our budgeted write-offs, we would have a pot of money to pull from. Um, transfer to special purpose reserves has been added for $70,000 to top up the election special purpose reserve. With the re recent election being funded from our special purpose reserves, our election fund is down to about $10,000, so we'll need to work through the next three years at topping that up. So we felt it would be prudent to spread it out over the three years at $70,000 a year to top that back up. Uh, the municipal accommodation tax, I talked about this. This is new. The city gets to keep 5% as an administration fee, so we've included a, an estimate of $200,000 in revenue, which would equate to $4 million being collected out of the municipal accommodation tax. And then the transfer to capital. So we'll talk about this a little bit more in the uh, municipal work slides, but we've increased the transfer to capital from $4 million to $4.5 million, and this is to help offset the million dollars in salaries that are being transferred to the capital budget. Fire services, not a lot of changes this year. Uh, you learned in camera, the public education officer has been added. This has been achieved through attrition, and that was per council direction on a report earlier, uh, or I guess in 2018. Municipal work. So be beginning in 2019, we're transferring the salaries of those staff who work on capital projects to, be the, to the capital fund to be funded from capital and allocated to the projects each staff are working on. This helps better reflect the cost of the capital projects, no different than you would code an external account uh, consultant to the capital project. Now we're going to put our internal consultant's time against it as well. Um, so that results in $894,000 of salaries transferred from municipal works. And then uh, the other large change in there is the city would like to transfer the full surplus in fleet generated from our internal rent rental rates charged to each department. Uh, so we charge our departments for our fleet, their repairs and amortization costs, the insurance, etc. So we create um, a surplus and the idea is to put that away, you charge the amortization so that you stock it away and you, can, you have the money there to buy the machines when they're done. Um, so that changed the transfer to, from special purpose reserves from 150000 to 863000 Cemeteries and parks. So the cemeteries includes a request of $50,000 for a new master plan. And then um, again, the salary thing, there's two, uh, there's some landscape salaries that will also be moved to capital, 221,000. So together those represent the 1.1 million that I referred to earlier. Transportation, I thought I would include their hours. There's quite a bit of changes with intermunicipal transit here. Uh, they're actually requesting their service hours to almost to more than double. They're going up 105%. Wego's going up seven, almost 8%, and Niagara Falls Transit's going up 1.5% in uh, service hours. Cheravan also has experienced increased demand. Um, so in order to accomplish or to service the increased demand, um, there's an additional cost of $96,000, and I believe that's for an additional route being added to the Cheravan. Um, and then in order to accomplish the level of service for intermunicipal transit that the region is requesting, the city may need to use their own buses in some instances until our new buses have been delivered. So when the city uses their own buses, we charge the region an extra $20 per hour as a capital component. The idea being, so where that's built into our revenue estimate from the region, that extra $20 an hour is being transferred to a uh, special purpose reserve for transit fleet replacement. So that's that $183,000 that you'll see in the budget that's new. So that's just transferring the region's capital component of their hourly cost to our fleet replacement reserve. And then you guys remember this from last week, uh, per council direction, the crossing guard hourly rates increased. So that, that results in an increase of 56000 Question? Oh, Councilor Campbell, sir. There was a motion made that uh, staff was going to look at uh, minimum wage 
for the crossing guards, uh, living wage, I'm sorry, uh, and that was coming back to us in the fall. Yep. That's still going to happen? Through you, Mr. Chair. Yes, what we're going to do, and we'd indicated to council last week, is we'll get this new hourly rate of 1734 in place, and the HR is doing that now. And we're gonna go and, and get a report together on the living wage issue. Thank you. What we would do is we present that back in a manner that if council did implement another increase, we would implement that for the new school year, starting in September. Thank you. Sorry, Councilor Thompson. Is that going to be a full report on that issue, a living wage? Um, how many people are involved? Well, to, to, answer the, to answer the question, uh, I'm not sure how many people in our community are affected, but it would be a complete report. We would explain to concept, the concept to council what the yeah, impact would be. Most people uh, who are crossing guards are usually retired. Um, it would be a supplement to their existing pensions. Uh, I, I, most of the people I see are older people who would probably be on pension anyway. Um, You're they, looking at applying? Uh, actually, <laughs> actually, I did look at that when it came up. I said, $17, and that's not too bad. Uh, so anyway, all I'm looking for all of the information uh, with respect, because if you're talking about living wage, um, this is a different sector altogether. So I think the question was more around, is it gonna be a report just on the transit hires or is it gonna be a report around all of our employees at City Hall? Well, uh, through you, Mr. Chair, I think in order to explain what the concept of the living wage is, we have to have a bit more fulsome report uh, because there are different components to it. Um, but um, the, the main direction ending up from that would be to, do we need to address this problem any further? Okay. But I think council, in understanding that, it needs to understand what that whole living wage debate is about. Okay. okay. Mr. Jen, did you have something to say as well? Uh, yes, just uh, I'd like to thank council. That evening when it went to, to council, four people applied the next day and were back up to speed in uh, hiring the nine that are, are that we were missing. That we need, that's good news, yeah. Okay, thanks, pass it back over to Jeff. So I've just included three slides um, that I've got from Carl's staff over at Transit to highlight the ridership changes, so um, it's hard to read from here, but I believe it's gone up to 1.8 million, is it, in 2018? for Niagara Falls Transit, and then we've got the IMT ridership up to 670,000 and the WeGo system up to almost 1.9. So you can see the increases there. Uh, recreation and culture, there's, there's not a lot of changes for 2019, however, I just wanted to highlight that there will be future budget impacts in 2020 with the new culture hub uh, hopefully being built and the potential implementation of a 10-year strategic plan, which is uh, going to come forward in two weeks as an ask in the 2019 capital budget submission. Planning and building, just wanted to highlight there's, uh, the Morrison Street building should be up and running soon. Uh, I think we're moving in this month or next month possibly. Um, so budget's been asked uh, 131,000 for expenses and 72,000 has been put in for revenue and that's for um, renting the second floor out. So this results in a deficit of $58,000. Debt. Um, everyone loves a debt slide, so I kept it in. <laughs> you can see that uh, from 2015 to 18, the city has reduced its debt balances from 57.7 million to 48.1 million, and that's a total reduction of 9.6 million. And you can see in 2019, uh, it's continued. It's projected to go down as well. Um, in the same periods, the city obtained new debt, as council's aware, of, of only 1.5 million in 2016 for the LED street lighting project, and 1.1 million in 2017 for the library HVAC system. Um, I know a question that's always asked is, what's the city's debt servicing charge? Um, and we're at 4.2 percent of our own source revenues at the end of 2016. So I'm hoping to have an update in a couple of weeks for 2017 for you. 4.2 and the province allows 25%. They allow 25 and I believe our council set a limit of not going over 10, so we, 10%. So we have a lot of room in there. 
Um, and we're going to we're looking to present further information on debt levels of the other municipalities uh, during our capital presentation next meeting. I know that was asked at an earlier council that we come back with that. So next steps, we're, we're not looking for approval tonight. We're looking for some direction and discussion on the operating budget. And if you can provide feedback, we can go back and kind of make some changes. Any counselor have any comments at all on the presentation or what you would like to see staff come back with? I know in the past we've always had staff come back with some options for us that will allow us to reduce the overall tax impact. Uh, that we pass on to the resident council strange. Yep, through you, Chair, to, to Tiffany. I just wonder, I don't know if you've ever had a detailed um, kind of report or if you're going to on our, on our reserve funds. Okay. And what um, what we can actually dip into. I know there's DC charges and stuff that are taken for for projects and stuff like that, but other stuff, maybe a detailed report that maybe we can come back in the next couple weeks on our, our, our next uh, next meeting, or, or if you had a plan already to do so, I don't know. Uh, through you, Mr. Chair, I wasn't planning on bringing a report on reserves, but it's something we could look at, including with the capital budget meeting. That would be um, amazing. Because we'll be talking about all the different funding levels, so we could okay. certainly provide an update on our end of year, end of 2017 balance. Yeah, perfect. Just give council an idea of what we got in there and what we can. I know we have a lot of projects that we want to finish up for this year. Yes. Um, if we have to dip into that, then it's possible. Yep. Thanks. Okay. Any other counselor? Councilor Lococo. Through you, Mr. Chair, I'd like to thank Ms. Clark for the hours that she spent with me going through all of these pages and all of these numbers. It was very helpful. Thank you. I know the region is increasing 5.8% and our residents don't want to see an increase in ours. It's going to be challenging to do that. We're already using some of our tax money for the some of the OLG for um, the subsidized, subsidization of our taxes. So it's hard to what's going to happen if our OLG money goes away what's going to happen to our taxes. Um, I, me personally and through the residents, there's a lot of people that would like to see a zero increase knowing that we're going to take a 5.8% at the region. So my inclination would be to refer it back to staff and come back with a balanced budget. That's my personal opinion based okay. on comments. Thank you. Thank you. Councilor Carrier. Well, I've really never had anyone else other than yourself that would like to see a 0% increase. <laughs> so uh, I'd like to see a 0% or less uh, because if the region does come in with a 5.8, and we've used the region, the region's come in lower than us before, which has averaged our rate pairs to the good in the past. But if they're going to come in anywhere near 6%, uh, it would be nice to give our taxpayers a break. We hear that all the time. You know, we get $25 million from the OLG. I know we're trying to spend most of it on infrastructure. But it would nice to be nice to see that us come in with a zero percent increase. So um, work your magic. <laughs> well, I think uh, or come back. I mean, with some I'm sure staff can prepare some options for council Absolutely. and then council that would can be, look at I, the I options. I would be all in favor of that as well. They want to go down that road. Council Street. Yes, you share again. To tip, I, was, I know I asked for a report on the um, on the reserve. I was actually um, thinking about our debt as well. And if we can, it, it, would you have a chart that compares us to? the other 11 municipalities as far as what their debt would be against ours. And if we could, if we could get that, that would be amazing for the next budget meeting too. Yeah, yeah through you, mm -hmm. Mr. Chair. I am working on a slide that would show the um, debt percentage level of the other area municipalities as well as the region for our capital budget meeting. Perfect. So I know that was a request before. But it would be the ratios, right? It wouldn't be the, the full debt that the municipality No, has. it would just be the ratio, yeah. Yeah, it would just but be the debt ratio. Debt servicing over own source revenues. Yeah. Okay. Well, it just gives us a good idea how we stand yeah. against the other municipalities. Oh, for sure. So. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Thank you. Any other comments by members of council? If not, then perhaps a motion just to accept the presentation and then pass it back to staff so that staff can come back with some options on how we can reduce the uh, 2.47 <coughs> down to zero or even lower. I have a motion by Councillor Lococo, seconded by Councillor Cario. All those in favor? Thank you very much. And then the next report is F2019-07. Um, and yeah, do we uh, want to just simply accept this as well? Um, I, I know a lot of it has been spoken about already. All of the finance stuff. Yeah. Yeah, through you, Mr. Chair. It, yeah, that's just the report that uh, basically summarized uh, 
the, the <coughs> report. So I think it's really just yeah. to do you need rec a motion? receive the report and we'll refer it okay. back to staff. Motion to receive and file made by Councilor Cario, seconded by Councilor Campbell. All those in favor, opposed. And I think we're done for finance then. I'll pass it back to the mayor. Okay, moving on to reports. 8.1 is our Region of Niagara Waste Collection Contract. So we've got more information, more information, and there's a recommendation that we give feedback to the region on how we feel about garbage and recycling. And there's a proposal, as you know, to go to every other week pickup of our garbage. There's a suggestion to have clear bags uh, in our in our garbage uh, as well uh, as some other things. So we've got a report here. Do we have some feedback or some direction from council on what the region is suggesting to do? Yes, Mr. Clerk. Uh, just before you get to that, uh, Your Worship, I did include a, a late addition to the agenda today um, where we did get some correspondence just received today from the town of Fort Erie on the same subject matter. And so I just wanted to bring that to council's attention as to what it is that Fort Erie had passed today. Um, so if you, if you go back and refresh your screens, it should, you should see it updated. So 8-1 is now uh, corresponds from Town of Fort Erie. The recommendation is just to receive that information, but it was thought that it would be uh, good for council to know what Fort Erie did in case that uh, comes to consideration for their uh, motion this evening. Yeah, go ahead, Councillor yeah. Peter Angela. I, I, I read the Town of Fort Erie's motion. Um, are they asking just for the region to explain what the benefits are? Or are they asking to take garbage back on their own? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I believe the motion is suggesting that as one of the options for costing, that they come back by looking at taking the entire waste management collection in-house and, and not contracting it out anymore. I believe that's the intent of the motion. <coughs> And Mr. Mayor, while I'm up, if I may, yep. if council, if you could, if council could just refer to the uh, first page of the report, uh, and really trying to do is through the report is just uh, try to structure it so we could work you through a bunch of decision points that might make it easier. So if you look at the first part, it talks about residential properties, and there's really sort of five decision points within the report that you really need to think about. And we went through each section that way. So if you wanna focus kind of- Are you of, on 8.2? I'm on, uh, I'm sorry, I'm on the staff report, which uh, would 8 be- 8.2, yes. So should we should deal with the, what we're gonna do first with the four year report, right? Then we can move to 8.2? Uh, sure, if you, like if you don't mind, just so we can move on. Uh, so did so. There's a um, report from Fort Erie that's basically asking the region, what are the benefits if they, if they bring waste management in house rather than contracting out to a third party group? So you still have the floor, Councillor uh, Peter Angelo. Yeah, thanks, Your Worship. I don't know if I really like that idea. Um, me personally, and I know that I've said this before at council, I would be willing to take the contract over as the city of Niagara Falls and allow the region to, I guess, disseminate the contract amongst the 12 municipalities and let them all do their own RFP. I would be more willing to do that than I would be to tell the region to do garbage in-house. So, I mean, uh, personally, I, I don't think that I would support the resolution, but I'll have some comments about the other report when you get there. Okay. If you need a motion just to receive and file okay. before the Erie one, that's fine. Okay, I just wanna hear first Councillor Thompson had his hand up, so we'll find out. Uh, um, I, I don't think they're, I think they're just asking for a uh, report regarding the financial aspect of it, how it would be. Um, as far as taking it back here, we had it here yep. and it was a disaster. And we were the ones that got it at the region. So it'd be interesting just to have a report. Um, that's their responsibility. Let's uh, hear what they have to say, the cost involved. I'm not in favor. Uh, at this point, but uh, I saw what happened the last time they called for tenders 
And I remember the fellow from the uh, region up there say, oh, this is wonderful. We got a, a tender, $5 million cheaper. <coughs> so you see what happened? It was disastrous at the end. They couldn't pay the people. They didn't come in. The equipment was falling apart. Uh, thank God there's another, another opportunity to uh, see what's going to happen. But uh, um, I, I don't see anything wrong with <coughs> getting a report saying, well, this is what the region would charge compared to so it would be a good comparison. I so did you want to make a motion then, uh, Councillor? Um, yeah, if uh, support, support, support the resolution. Sure. Yeah. Okay, we got a motion by Councillor Thompson to support the resolution. Do I have a seconder? Do we have a second? Councillor Cario? Do we have any further discussion to this? Yes, Councillor Kemp. I'm, I'm not quite sure what the resolution is. <coughs> the res resolution is that uh, we support Fort Erie getting okay. a report regarding the cost of in-house garbage collection. And uh, so we can use that as a comparison with the tenders when they come up and we can have some ideas. Yeah, yeah that's essentially uh, what they're at, that the report. I can, I can support that. One of the items they talk about is clear garbage bags. Yeah, well, that'll be the next. We're going to deal with that in the next okay. report. Next one. Yeah, in the next report. Okay, so we've got a motion by Councillor Thompson, second by Councillor Campbell, that we support the Fort Erie resolution asking the region to come up with a cost analysis of bringing the waste uh, removal in house. So we'll call the vote. All those in favor? Okay, and that's approved. Thank you. So now we move to 8.2, Mr. CAO. Yes, yeah, so Mr. Mayor, uh, if you look at your report, uh, if you pull that up, try to walk you through the, the segments because the region is looking for feedback. Now keep in mind that the region ultimately is gonna have this issue put out to tender and uh, regional council is the one that's responsible for making the final decision in terms of the uh, <coughs> decisions that are made on, on, the, t on the tendered bids. So if you look at uh, low density residential, which is uh, between one and six units. And that is, uh, there's five decision points that we really should get feedback on tonight. So the first one is every other week garbage collection. Uh, increase from one bag to two bag per limit if you go to two uh, every other week. So one me, could I just stop you? Yep. Which one are we on? Which uh, attachment are we working on? It's the very first report, Mr. Mayor. Okay, that one's got the breakdown of uh, low density? It's got one to five. Yeah, yeah, that's one. So the first recommendation. Very first report. Very first page. Okay. Yeah. Right okay. There. Oh, I see what you're saying. Okay. So one and two really go together. Uh, if you agree with every other week garbage collection, then you're going to increase from one bag to two bags every other week. Do you want to vote on them individually? You can, if that's the way you'd like to go. Uh, but I thought if we could kind of clear section by section, it might be helpful. So the other one in here is weekly recycling uh, would be continued. What would be added is a new four item large pickup per residential unit. So that might be larger items that you need to pick out that you're no longer using. So you'd be able to put four of those out every week. Um, and then the other number five is that they want to scrap the appliance and, and scrap metal pickup. So dealing with just low density residential, which is one to six units, those are the five decision uh, points that we need to come up with recommendations on tonight. So the first one, um, going from weekly garbage collection to bi-weekly collection, and going from one bag to two. Uh, I did uh, do a little bit of research on six regions around the province, <coughs> excuse me, and uh, as an example, oftentimes they compare Waterloo re region. Waterloo region does pick up every two weeks, but it's four bags. It's not two bags. Also, it should be noted that they have a little different process. They also do collect grass cl clippings. We don't. And uh, on that issue, something you know worth at least comparing when you want to compare similar services. Large pickups. Uh, and large pickups, they do every other week. So uh, when they uh, have their garbage pickup. Yes, Councillor? So I think you just summarized everything uh, right there. And if you looked at the survey and the uh, statistics that we have received through our staff, they indicate they're pretty happy 
with the existing system. No, no ba clear bags, uh, no change in the pickup. Um, what do we want to change for? Okay, so Councilor P. Regal. Yeah, Your Worship, um, I know the region did come here a few weeks ago and presented to us. Uh, when they came and presented to us, I had some questions for them. I guess the one thing uh, that's good in all of this is that they're going out to all the municipalities and they're asking for feedback. And they should be doing that because the way I look at it is that we pay for the service. And that was one of the questions that I had the lady who was here presenting on behalf of the region, is that to them it's just a simple in and out. They get a bill from the contractor that they've now contracted the service to. They divide it up based on municipalities and then each municipality has to pay their own bill. So really it's the municipalities that should decide what the service level is. And based on the feedback that we've been getting, Your Worship, I, I really don't think that people want to see a change. And I don't think that change would carry value with it as well. I know they talked about potential savings in other regions, and even in the report tonight, it talks about a $1.5 million savings in Waterloo. If you go on and you look at what the current annual rate of the cost for the contracted service is in Waterloo, it's around $15 million, which means that before they started this new contract, it was at 16 and a half. So they saved one and a half million dollars by going down to every other week. Um, and if you think about that on a percentage basis, one and a half million on 16 and a half million, it's not even 10%. Well, the average homeowner in Niagara Falls pays $130 for the garbage bill. So we're now telling people that we can save them potentially $13, but then their service gets cut in half, and then they have to go out and buy clear bags. I really don't think it's worth it. I, don't, I, I think people are gonna look at us later on and say, well, you really didn't do anything for me. And we probably wouldn't. So I, I, I'd say that we just leave it as it is. Second second motion. <laughs> sure. Okay, so we had a motion by Councillor Thompson, second by Councillor uh, Peter Angelo that we ask the region to leave the service as it is for the garbage. Councillor Campbell. Uh, thank you, Your Worship. Personal experience, I put uh, some garbage out in a clear garbage bag, last pickup. Uh, somebody went through it the night before because they could see the contents of it. And uh, there was a toilet seat I threw out and uh, a couple of other things that had been hanging around my basement. And the garbage was all over the driveway. So. I can't, I can't can't support the uh, the clear bags. Diapers? No diapers yet. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so if there's no further comments, we'll call the vote for the status quo. All those in favor? Okay, and that's unanimous on that one. Yep, thank yeah. you, Mr. CAO. The, yeah, there's just a couple of other items we, we should uh, go through. Um, on the multi-residential, we have, uh, that's an enhanced service that we provide. Um, what that does is on uh, multi-residential properties that are over six units, we provide that pickup. And that's kind of unique in the region, but it's an extra level of service at the city of Niagara Falls. What we were suggesting in the report is, let's ask the region to get us pricing on that, and then when we know what the pricing is, we can make a final decision on what we want to do with that. Okay, moved by Councillor Thompson, second by Councillor Strange, that we get a price from the region on servicing the multi-residential units greater than six. All those in favor? Okay, and that's approved unanimously. And Mr. Mayor, I assume that the status quo would apply to all of the other items dealing with inside and outside BIAs. I assume that covers that. Uh, the only other thing, again, that we should get pricing on uh, and have it come back is our specific enhanced services. Uh, which include our uh, public space recycling program, our city uh, litter receptacles in the BIAs, where we have seven day a week collection, uh, mid-May to mid-October. And uh, those are two enhanced services that we would continue to ask them to give us pricing on. When we have that pricing, we can come back and get a final decision from council on those as well. And I assume that the uh, use of mandatory clear bags, uh, I believe that we you want to do a separate motion on that that basically says, I take it that council does not want to entertain clear bags. That's not a status quo item really. It's right, so we thing. need a motion, a specific motion. A move by Councillor Campbell, seconded by What's the motion for? That clear bags. We don't want clear bags. We don't want them. Don't want them. Yeah. Move yeah. by, uh, okay, move by Councillor Campbell, seconded by Councillor Lococo. 
that this council goes on record as not being in support of clear bags for our garbage. We'll call the vote. All those in favor? And that's unanimous. So, Mr. Mayor, I think that's enough out of tonight that based on those motions that we can get that information back up to the region. They're looking for feedback by uh, the end of the month. Uh, once we get the pricing and they do the tendering, uh, we'll bring some other items back to council on those enhancements and we'll have a separate report at that time. You know, councilors, one of the other things, my concerns that I'm hearing from residents is I, I haven't, I know I saw the one stat that some people could accept uh, clear bags. I haven't met that person yet that said they was, were okay with it. They don't want garbage police. They don't want their neighbors looking through their uh, garbage and determining if they're putting organics in or, or who's wearing diapers in that household or, or whatever's going on. The other thing I've had people very concerned that if you start restricting uh, the amount of garbage they can put out and whether they'll pick up appliances or not, you're going to find them in the rural areas, in the ditches, as we do sometimes now. People are gonna drive and dump it out of their trunks on their own late at night. And we're gonna have a big, much bigger cleanup. So I, I don't know what's precipitating this. And when you look around the province, and I looked at several regions, we're way ahead of what anyone else is trying to do. One of the arguments that they're using at the region is they're trying to promote diversion. So more recycling of organics and, and plastics and whatnot, less garbage. And one of their main rationale is that save our landfills. Well, the problem is our private landfills like Walker are taking garbage from other areas. They'll fill it up, if not with our garbage, it'll be with garbage from some other jurisdiction. So I'm not sure, I know it's a noble idea, but to force people to do it, people are gonna, I think rebel and you're gonna find more and more of it in your rural areas. I don't think it's gonna work well. And people don't like the idea of their privacy being infringed upon with clear bags. I have not heard any support from that whatsoever. So I'm not sure that statistic, how uh, significant it is statistically. I, I, I doubt that it is, because I haven't met these people. Have you met these people, Council Peer Not yet. Not yet, okay, <laughs> no I, keep, I keep looking, I keep looking. Yeah, I'm sorry, Mr. CAO? No, if, if I may, uh, I, I took it that on the appliance and scrap metal pickup that it would be continued, because that's status quo. Status quo, I took it that way too. And the only other item I guess we should mention, and, and I believe it's a good thing, and I know from our staff, uh, this can be a good thing, is that we would uh, like to have the four large items per uh, residential unit uh, um, per collection included. Right now, as you know, if you set out large items, you have to call several days before. Quite typically what happens is that if you're at the end of the month and tenants are moving, people just set, set stuff up the curbside. Well, typically what ends up happening, our staff have to go and pick that up because it gets left behind because um, it wasn't on the list to be picked up. Uh, it does become a problem. I think that would be a good thing to include in this new contract where automatically you could put some larger items out at curbside uh, just as of right without having to call in and make that call. So maybe we get a motion here supporting the idea of leaving a large curbside items out at the weekly pickup. Moved by Councilor Angelo, seconded by Councilor Strange. All those in favor? Okay, and that's approved. And I should point out, uh, in Waterloo Region again, it's every other week, but there's no limit to what you can put up. So I mean, they're looking at a major reduction in our service, you know, so I'm not sure that anyone asked them to do that. So, okay, so moving along, um, 8.3 Council Discretionary Spending. Uh, the first item up there is our discretionary spending, and there's a recommendation there with respect, okay. Motion by Councilor Peter Angelo, seconded by Councilor Supporting that, Councillor Thompson? Question? Yeah, question by Councillor Cario. On the um, moving the uh, $500 to $1,000, how does that affect uh, taxation? Anybody answer the question? On ta personal ta income personal tax taxation. That, you know, because I, I'm assuming that even in, in a charitable donation for a private business uh, for a dinner, uh, some of it's reassessed back to the, the business not 100%, it's not 100% tax deductible to go to a dinner, to donate to a dinner. The Revenue Canada comes in and does an assessment. They won't let you go and enjoy a dinner without having some of it allocated towards personal use. Does that affect this at all? I don't know if we could ask her, uh, yeah. Yeah, to you, Mr. Mayor. So I think um, the idea with this is if you 
if you want to attend the dinner, you would buy a ticket through uh, your sure. counselor allowance. Right. Um, for the organization, you're right, only a portion of that would be considered charitable. But if you're not going to attend the dinner, we've changed the wording in the bylaw to allow you to buy a ticket or send a donation. So if you're not going to attend and you want to give a donation that's equivalent to the ticket value, okay. they won't get you a plate for dinner or everything. That whole portion would right. be so charitable. Be percent tax deductible. Correct. Okay. Thank you. Okay. If there's no further questions or comments, uh, we've already got the motion. We'll call the vote. All those in favor? Okay, and that's approved unanimously. Moving to 8.4, Council Committee Remuneration. There are two recommendations there. Number one, that Council receive the report. Number two, that by increasing the salaries to the non-union staff, subject to budget annual, the way that we've done it traditionally in the past. Yes, yeah, so just it's reaffirming. I, I think this is what we always do. So yeah. Yes. Okay, moved by Councillor Thompson. Yes, Councillor Carrio. Question, Worship. Yep. So, so this does not address uh, remuneration for councillors attending no, committees? No, that doesn't, right? This is just the, the rate of increase. Is that right? Mm -hmm. But, but is, this, is this where we were going to talk about? Yes. Councillor, right? Yes. So the staff has not made a recommendation for... Uh, Remuneration no. for any councillors. No. Okay. No. Okay. So I, I I'd like to have a discussion. So I would like to hear what they have to say. Um, okay. Yep. Yeah. 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 Mr. Dark. Through the through the mayor and the members of council, I, I was asked to do some some research on this and uh, on the committee work remuneration and uh, um, it's it's fair to say that you know Niagara Falls Council has a large number of uh, uh, community uh, committees. Uh, I think we totaled 25 or so. Um, and the difficulty I had is that it's, it's somewhat unprecedented in comparison. I didn't really find any other kind of reliable models out there to, um, to uh, in terms of comparison. So it's really, I suppose, at the will of council or maybe perhaps reflecting that in, into base salaries or something. Uh, you know, um, or some other kind of creative way of doing it. Okay, I've got Councilor Carrio, Councilor Boko. Uh, well, I understand that, you know, the staff doesn't want to really weigh in on this, but um, during the committee uh, discussions on, there are certain committees that are paid and certain committees that aren't paid, and, and, and I've always been a proponent of, of having councillors equally paid for the time they spend. So I'll put something on the floor then. Uh, if I think that the councillors... Well, you know, it's funny, before we made the appointments, everybody wanted to go there. But now that the appointments are made, nobody wants to go there. I'm talking about, I think we should be paying our councillors for the committees that they sit on. And I would suggest that we pay them a $75 per meeting to attend the committee. If they're on a committee that's appointed by council, if it's their committee, that we pay them or reimburse them, that's roughly the same amount that the rate that Hydro reimburses our councillors, or the Parks Commission reimburses our councillors, or other committees would reimburse councillors. It's only fair that the councillors that put the same amount of time, they get paid. So I'll throw okay. it out for discussion. Okay, so we've got, uh, throw, that's, does everyone understand that? So we can address that in a moment. Uh, Councillor Lococo. Through you, Mr. Mayor. I thought when we were looking at it, we were looking exactly that, is if you were on one, one committee you would get paid X number of dollars. If you were on six committees, you'd get paid X number of dollars. I would not support the increase overall for all of us, just for the certain committees. That's my opinion. Okay, okay. Do we have other uh, comments or feedback from councillors? Okay, so do you want to put that into a motion then, councillor? Okay. No, I, I would move that, that we, that we uh, put that system in place that uh, if you're a councillor on a committee appointed by council, so that means that you can't just go to a, a committee meeting and get paid. You have to be the council appointee on the committee that you would get paid $75 for each meeting that you attend. Okay. Do we have a seconder for that motion? Councillor Strange? Do we have any further discussion to that? Okay, seeing none, we'll call the vote. All those in favor? Okay, and that's approved. Thank you for that, and as well, uh, we need to uh, do I recommendations one and two here. Uh, one, that we receive the remuneration, and two, that we follow along and affirm bylaw 9922.
Okay, moved by Councillor Campbell, seconded by Councillor Peter Angelo. There's no further discussion of that. We'll call the vote, all those in favor. Okay, and that's approved, thank you for that. Item 8.5, Physician Incentive Funding. So you've got a report in there to help us recruit doctors and specialists to the community. Councillor Thompson. Okay. Uh, yeah, I'm uh, very pleased to uh, speak to this. Um, we, I, in fact, I heard from you, we have <coughs> four doctors in town that are still accepting patients. Um, much better than it was in 2000. It was a, a disaster. And uh, the doc, doctor recruitment helped out, but uh, we're now finding a specialist in the medical field uh, are not here. Uh, people do not have the opportunity to, without traveling out of the area. So I think that uh, the increase from 80 to 300,000 uh, is appropriate and I would like to uh, certainly uh, uh, mention one doctor, I'm not going to mention the name, uh, but you have been in communication with her for the last year and um, I happen to be in her office for some medical treatment and uh, there was like 50 or 60 people in the waiting room and uh, she's been trying to get uh, another partner in here to take off some of the uh, pressure and uh, I think she's got somebody and has made lots of changes and I think she'd be an excellent person and I would suggest that uh, Dale Morton, who has always handled this in the past, uh, contact uh, the doctor and uh, see if we can help her out and uh, take some of the pressure off. But this is uh, an extremely important area and responsible. I was shocked when uh, Dr. Singh just moved his clinic to uh, Fort Erie. Uh, huge loss. Um, I was there several times and it was excellent. So I think we have a responsibility to uh, do this and I would move the report. Second. Okay, we've got a mo motion by Councilor Thompson. Yeah, I just want to speak to that too. I'll yep. second that motion as well and I agree with Councilor Thompson that we do, do not have enough doctors obviously in the city. I, I'm down and, and my, my mom is actually a medical secretary. I go down, I can't even get into to my own doctor sometimes, my mom's the medical secretary. I go down, I'm using the walk-in clinic and there's like 100 people waiting. So I think with the influx of, of our population and um, it's, it's not the, the right ratio as far as doctors to population. So I agree, agree with this and, and have to second the motion. Okay, so we've got a motion by Councillor Thompson, seconded by Councillor Strange, that we approve report number 2019-04, uh, Physician Recruiting. We'll call the vote, all those in favor? Okay, and that's unanimous, thank you for that. On to the consent agenda. Move the consent agenda. Second. Motion by Councillor Cario, seconded by Councillor Peter Angel that we move the consent agenda unless there's anyone that needed anything lifted. And seeing nothing, nothing uh, coming forward, we'll call the vote. All those in favor? Okay, and that's approved, thank you. So we move on to communications and comments of the city clerk. So I see we've got uh, one here, uh, fire department annual report. Uh, the recommendation is that we receive the report for information. Moved by Councillor Peter Angelo. Seconded by, yes, yes Councillor Thompson. Uh, congratulations to the Chief on an excellent report. All right, congratulations. Chief seconded by Councillor Lococo. And you want to comment on it, Councillor? Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. It was an excellent report. Thank you very much. I had two questions from some residents. When there's medical calls and the fire department get there first, what is the cost to the fire department compared to EMS? And the second question is, is there a charge for false calls? Good questions for the chief. chief. Uh, the first question, Mr. Mayor, to, to the counselor, uh, the first question, is there a cost to the fire department? I mean, our staff are on duty 24 seven, so whether we're responding to the call or sitting in the station, it's there would be no cost that way. The only fuel that we would have to do pay for would be fuel of the vehicle. 
I don't know if that really answers the question. Um, no, I, I'm sorry, I meant is there a cost to the person with, for the no. false alarm? Sorry. So in the medical call, there's no cost to the person if fire goes to the call. There is a fee for if the patient is transported to the hospital through ambulance and OHIP. As far as false alarms, we do have a fee for service um, budget line that allows us to charge back for false alarms in buildings. So remote alarms, uh, hotel alarms, stuff like that. But this council several years ago um, waived those fees so we don't recuperate that. All right, we got uh, our questions answered. If there's no further questions, then we'll call the vote uh, to receive the report. All those in favor? Okay, that's approved, thank you. Moving on to 10.2, Canadian Forces Snowbirds are having their air show at Niagara District Airport, and they're asking for our, an approval letter for them to fly 500 feet above the ground uh, through Niagara Falls. Moved by Councillor Peter Angelo, second by Councillor Cario. There's no further discussion, we'll call the vote. All those in favor? And that's approved. <laughs> Yours twice. Uh, moving on to 10.3, the downtown BIA is requesting that we discontinue the 90 minute free parking and move the paid parking into the downtown BIA district. So we're looking for a motion. We refer to staff, That's the recommendation. We'll refer to staff to come back with the report. I'm sorry, yes, Mr. CAO. Well, yeah. Mr. Mayor. Um, we would just like to have this referred to staff because it does have some capital budget implications. Uh, so we'd like to address it when the capital budget comes back. Move recommendation. Okay, moved by Councillor Cario, second by Councillor Dabrowski. Call the vote, all those in favor? Okay, and we refer that to staff. Town of Lincoln resolution. They have put forward a resolution in support of the Ontario wine and beer in retail stores as part of the modernization of alcohol sales. So they're looking for our support for their resolution. How do you feel about that? Yes, Councillor Carroll. I think that we're not really equipped to deal with that right now unless we're gonna do some investigating and find out the pros and cons if we either refer it to staff or receive and file. Because I think it would, wouldn't be right just to. Yeah, buying it everywhere, yeah. Yep. So do we have a, well, do we have a motion by, what, what, what do you recommend? What's the will of council? Receive and file? Yeah. I mean, I don't want to give staff any more to do, but I don't want to vote on this if, unless we're going to do some research. Yeah. I don't know if it's a good thing or a bad thing. To refer. Refer to staff? Yeah. He doesn't want to refer to staff. He wants to refer to He's you. He's got enough to so do. So Dale could do a report for you. Refer, how are you going to do What was that? Refer to staff. Okay, okay, well it looks like we got a will of council. They want to refer it to staff <laughs> for Dale Morton to do and put Ken's name on it. Okay, okay so that's what we do. Every okay. liquor store. Okay, moved by Councillor Cario, seconded by Councillor Thompson. We'll call the vote. All those in favor? Okay, all right, Dale, opposed. congratulations. We got small work for you. Opposed? opposed? <laughs> oh, Councillor Cario is opposed. Did you make the motion? No. I was gonna I was gonna Well didn't I have him as making the motion? No, I was gonna receive a file. Oh, okay, motion. so I need Councilor someone Peter else to make. Councillor Peter Angel making the motion. Yes. Yeah. Second by Councillor yes. Thompson. Okay. To refer to staff. Right, okay. All right, good. <laughs> Got it. Thank you. 10.5, Fresh Air Fund Proclam Proclamation. Request to have March 22nd be Fresh Air Fund Day. So Moved by Councillor Peter Angel. Second by Councillor Strange. All those in favor? That's approved. The Rotary Club of Niagara Falls having their 21st trivia night. Yes, Mr. CAO, did you want to comment on this? Mr. Mayor, if I could, uh, six, seven, and eight, yeah. if I could just lead you through based on the sure. recommendation that you just approved right. with your new discretionary just spending. All the recommendations in the agenda. So, so eight is asking for uh, a table. So the process now that you've approved the report, uh, if any of you would like to go to that event and, and, and buy a ticket, that will be now coordinated with the mayor's office, so you simply would make a request to have them purchase a ticket for that event on your behalf. It would then come out of your $1,000 discretion for expenses. So, set at a table by yourself? I could. <laughs> That's fun. Or, or you may make a donation from that same fund. That's the same that goes for number seven with the bond spiel, uh, where they're looking for a team. Again, that could be an individual sponsorship that you could take you just have to request that through the mayor's office. 
with the Wendy Learn, which is the third one, that's more of a sponsorship. But again, as individuals, if you like to sponsor that, you could contact the mayor's office and ask that you have a sponsorship for that event. So uh, in the future, we will have these uh, sent to you uh, via the clerk's office, and that's how we would deal with them on an individual basis. We don't need to have uh, individual group motions or anything based on the uh, new policy that you've just approved tonight. So these, Mr. Mayor, could really just be received and filed. Okay, Councilor Kerry? <clears throat> okay, I understand. If a councilor calls and says, I want to make a donation, and it comes out of that fund, who gets the charitable tax receipt? The taxpayers no. or the councilor or nobody? How's well, that work? Through you, Mr. Mayor, it's, uh, it's, 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 it's money coming from the city. Right. Um, so on, on a donation, there's no tax receipt because so it be uh, we don't, we so don't pay tax. Officially, the, the uh, donation would not be made officially by the councilor. It would be made officially by the city. It's coming from the city, by the but city. It's, out of, it's out of that $1,000 allowance. But the donation would be made at the request of the councilor, but be made by the city. Yes. Okay. So uh, did you want to make a motion that we receive the three reports and then our staff can Service. reach out? Okay. Yeah. Moved by Councillor Carroll, second by Councillor Strange, that we receive the report, the three um, requests for funding support and that our staff in the mayor's office will reach out to the councillors and see who wants to put some of their discretionary money toward any or all of these uh, requests. Yes, Councillor Thompson. I'm wondering with uh, Wendy Lear, we've uh, all had that uh, information uh, on our computers. Um, if there's some way we could assist by putting it on the city website and uh, uh, I think it's great they're all going to New York from Queen Street to perform down there and uh, see if there's anybody in the community who would like to support that. Um, which one is that now? The uh, Wendy Lear. Oh, the right, dancers. right. Yeah. Well, so we're going to, oh, I see what you're saying. Did you want to, well, did we call the vote already? I'm sorry, did, on the last one. You have not. So do you want to include that as a friendly amendment? Um, Councillor Cario, that we also put on our website, sure. encouraging the community to throw support behind the Wendy Laird uh, Dance Studio yes. for their going to New York. Okay, we'll include that in our motion. You good with that, Councillor? Sorry, it's called a vote. Pardon? It's called a vote. Not, Pardon? No, I'm going to call it now. Okay, we'll call the vote. All those in favor? <laughs> Opposed? Are you for it or are you for it? Sorry. He's against. <laughs> Ever since he took his dance lessons, he's okay. Moving along, too fast. Ten point nine proclamation, twenty nineteen Heritage Week, requesting that Move Municipal Heritage way. Week that Council proclaim February eighteenth to twenty fourth as Heritage Week. Moved by Councilor Peter mm -hmm. Angelo and seconded mm -hmm. by Councilor Dabrowski. All those in favor, and that's approved. Thank you. Ten point ten. There's a boarding house bylaw request from Mr. Ross Hicks to have council consider a boarding house bylaw. Yeah. Yes, Councillor Thompson. Yeah, I've been dealing with this for the last year and a half. Um, with, and our inspection people, Gerald Spencer and his people have been phenomenal in dealing with this. You've got a, a small street, Harvey Street, a little crescent at the end and you've got a house there in a single family residential area that has uh, 10 uh, boarding uh, rooms and uh, the cars are out on the street all day and they put six cars in the driveway at night and uh, Mr. Ross Hicks has been trying to see what can be done and I think the problem is we don't have a bylaw regarding boarding homes in single family residential areas. I think there's uh, the possibility that a couple of rooms could, could exist, but having 10 rooms uh, in that area uh, is unacceptable to all of the neighbors in the area. And I would like to refer this to staff 
to come back with a report on how we should handle this in the future. Okay. okay. Motion by Councillor Thompson, second by Councillor Campbell, that we refer this report or this um, direction on boarding houses to staff to come back with a report. Okay, we'll call the vote. All those in favor? And that's approved. Thank you. Ratification of in camera, Mr. Clerk? Do we have any ratification? No, nothing to ratify. Okay. And moving on to the bylaws. Do we have it? Give them a first, second, and third reading. Okay, before we do that, do we have any additional bylaws, Mr. Clerk? No. no. So we have a motion by Councillor Peter Angelo to give the bylaws a first, second, and third reading. Seconded by Councillor Dabrowski. All those in favor? Okay, and that's approved. Mr. Clerk? Yep. New business. Okay, you don't need to read them or you don't need to say nope. they're approved? Okay, nope. it's all done. Okay, good. New business. Do you have any new business from Council? Oh, Councillor Peter Angelo's holding out. Councillor Thompson. <laughs> Valentine's, yeah. He wants to wait till the end. Yeah. To stretch it out. Um, anyway, um, had a call today uh, from a city resident who has acquired a piece of property at Miller Estates subdivision, uh, zoned by, um, uh, what's his name? Huh? Rico. No. This is uh, Brian Sinclair's oh. original one. It's been there pr approved for probably 10 years. And the woman uh, has purchased it two or three years ago and she got uh, approval for the septic system out there. There are two or three acres and she was coming in to get a building permit uh, everything has been approved by this city council planning and she went to see about the building permit and they told her city of Niagara Falls now wants you to go to the uh, uh, environment uh, the conservation authority uh, to get their approval before we give you a building permit so she has to uh, hire people. She has to go to a hearing. Uh, all kinds of nonsense after years. And she's probably the first one that's had to do that. I would like to have a report back to see uh, why are we doing this? Uh, I can understand if it was a new development that we hadn't dealt with yet, but this is been there for probably longer than 10 years. And uh, she was extremely upset about the fact that she was ready to build, uh, came in, got her septic permit, was gonna get deal with the city for her building permit. And uh, they said, you gotta go to the conservation authority now. Okay. Uh, anyway, I heard enough about the conservation authority. I would move we have a report back to see why are we doing this and if it's necessary. Okay. Motion by Councillor Thompson, second by Councillor Cario. We have staff come back with a report on building permits and on the process and why it's necessary to go to the NPCA for approval of past approved um, developments. So we'll call the vote. All those in favor? Okay, and that's approved. Thank you. Councillor Thompson, anything else? You're done? Who else has new business? Councillor Peter Angelo. Happy Valentine's Day. Mr. Oh. Chairman. Wow. Second. Moved by Councillor Cario, second by Councillor Thompson that we adjourn. All those in favor? And we're adjourned. Happy Valentine's, everybody. <laughs>